Lowell was never rated as one of the world's best in CSGO. In fact, he was rarely even considered as a top prospect. Yet now the Spaniard is playing a crucial role on one of Valorant's best sides, Team Heretics. Lowell's journey from CSGO throwaway to Valorant Titan is one of the most unique in the FPS scene. Bouncing between Penta, Mouse Sports, Dignitas and Movie Star Riders, Lowell never found a home in CSGO. Valorant has been far kinder to Lowell though. He's been one of the long-standing members of Team Heretics and has established himself as one of the game's preeminent Sage players. With some huge wins under his belt already, Lowell has proved that not only can he play at the highest level in Valorant, he can dominate the competition. He's going around time. Right. It's everything, he gets one. And now the 1v1, Mo is so low in this scenario. And Lowell, the guy's a veteran. Years of experience, the plants for him, the frags for him! Heretics get to 11! Lowell has been a trendsetter in the Valorant scene. While Sage was wildly popular in the beta and early in the game's competitive events, she quickly fell out of favour as teams adopted a more aggressive approach. But despite that meta shift, Lowell has been unwavering in his usage of the healer, playing Sage at a sky-high 87.6% pick rate with an absurd 88.3% win rate. Lowell hasn't just stayed on Sage for comfort, he has single-handedly made people reconsider whether the support is worth fitting into nearly any team comp. Looking to try and get this one half, which will be successful. The wallbang still possible here, but he's hiding in the corner and Lowell's gonna do it! While Lowell still offers the flexibility to move on to Sober if needed, he's only picked the Hunter 11 times, preferring to stay on his Sage on every map other than Icebox, ironically. He's also dispelled a Sage stereotype. Most believe that she's been used defensively thanks to her abilities to slow down her enemies. But there is no fear in Lowell's play. Absolutely eviscerates Summon. They did not check the corner and Lowell is the absolute animal waiting. Lowell's so-called Battle Sage takes on any challenger and he steps up to frag as if he were playing Rayner. Other teams have tried and failed to adopt the heretic style of play, but no one has been able to replicate Lowell's aggressive use of Sage, and that's one of the key aspects of their success. Oh. How did he get that kill? Lowell and Paul are actually going to trade back up. They're going to invest the res as well. Blister are madly aggressive. They are fighting the post plan. Something that was brought up before that I'll touch on is Karemi is still trying to isolate the fights. He loses them eventually. Lowell's intuitive talent and timing allow him to play Sage in a way that no other player in the world seems able to pull off. Instead of always falling back and slowing things down, Lowell will pick his moment and burst through defenses time after time. The style that Lowell has so clearly made his own is built from his days in CSGO, where he used his impeccable timing to put together a 1.16 opening kill ratio and a 1.0 overall. Lowell has never had the aim of 10s or the movement of Wardell, but his skill and ability to pick the right moment to strike have carved a spot out at the top of Valorant, not only for him, but for Heretics as a whole. During the recent Masters 1 Grand Final where Heretics took on Ascend, Lowell showed his big brain and excellent timing multiple times, playing Sage across five maps and going plus 15 with the second best KD in the match on a 1.24. He also won four 1v1s, more than all of Ascend or the rest of Heretics combined. With the 1v1, but look at the HP. Oh, they just squared one so low. This could work out. Bone Cold onto the rifle. They are both so low. Oh, he's missed his, sh his shot. And now the dance around the site happens. Bone Cold dies. And Lowell. Oh. Lowell may not play the same hyper-aggressive agents as other Valorant stars, but he has shaped the meta in his own way. And he's proved the doubters who said he'd never win anything wrong. Less than a year since making the switch from CSGO, he's already won a major at first strike and has a silver medal at another. Not bad for someone people said had peaked. Heading into Masters 2, Lowell is one of the most intriguing players to watch, and with the first international Valorant event set to take place in May, the meta has never been more of a talking point than it is now. Lowell will bring his Sage pick, which is now spread through most of Europe, but it still sees limited play in North America and Brazil, two regions that prefer a much faster aim-based style. It remains to be seen who has the best way of playing, and teams have discussed making changes before Valorant's first LAN. With so much uncertainty, Lowell seems to be one of the few stable spots in Valorant. He will be playing Sage, and he will be matched up against the best in the world. Would you dare go through this again, Heretics? They don't know how to get rid of this, they don't know what to do! And Bose has just been waiting! He dies, but missed it! Hold on, Lowell! He jumps on it, does he have time? Yes, he does! No way! The clash of styles will be exciting to watch, 
Heretics often run a double and sometimes triple sentinel composition. Meanwhile, NA teams usually go for high-flying duelist comps. It'll be up to Lowell and Pora to control bomb sites and keep heretics from being overwhelmed. Lowell in particular will be crucial in Heretic's success in Stage 2, because when he isn't at his blood-chilling best, Heretics struggle. Lowell rarely goes negative in a series, but the last time he did, they fell to a surprise defeat to Alliance. Heretics will be entering Stage 2 as one of the favourites, and Lowell will still go in with a chip on his shoulder. Some said his first strike win was a fluke, so this will be his chance for him to prove that not only can he be a consistently top player, but also a trendsetter. If you can find more success with what some still consider an off-meta pick, any naysayers will be silenced for good. Heretics weren't favourites in First Strike. They had to earn their way past teams no one ever thought they'd beat, like Team Liquid and G2. But they just kept winning. And it was the same story in Masters 1. Surely Heretics couldn't beat these big names and make another run to the Grand Final? Despite coming up against a masterful performance from a Sen C Ned in the Masters 1 Grand Final, they are still one of Europe's best and are willing to take the fight to anyone. Heretics aren't the plucky underdogs anymore. They're in a great position heading into Masters 2, and many expect them to take the title in Reykjavik. On tuck behind default, one backside, Nuki holding on to lane now, G2 have to go fast, not a lot of utility, Nuki finds his fourth on the round now, pit down in heaven, the ace from Nuki closes this out, G2 eliminated here by Heretics. Lowell heads into Masters 2 as one of the best in the world, and just as meta-defining as Wardell's jet, Lowell and his trusty sage are on the path to Valorant Masters glory. But what do you think? Will Heretics earn their second major win in Reykjavik? Is Lowell the best sage in the world? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Deserto for more Valorant content.